Back at the Aurora Borealis planet. It's Junior running away from something. I can tell from the music that this is a dream. It's like a war zone. The same place Cherenkov was when he was with Utik. Did Daddy leave you behind, Junior? <laughs> Looks like it's starting to rain. Well, Junior's real name is definitely a spoiler in and of itself, so I'm gonna keep on calling him Junior. Guinan. Guinan's the name of a cat? Your father is a cat. How are you, Junior? Don't say anything. It's all over. Is that his twin? Everything. Is he gonna make it? Not looking too hot. Albedo! Albedo? Who the hell's Albida? Ah! I'm so lost. What the hell's going on? Now he's falling into the blood ocean. <laughs> wow, your shirt looks just like Billy's. Do you know that, Jim? Damn hell? it! He's got the mark of the beast on his hand. Freaking 666 right there. Clear as day. He's not supposed to be on what his forehead. What is this place? The environmental controls here seem extremely strict. They're so big. Six to each side. With one directly across. Thirteen in all. I can Looks count. like each block has a name inscribed on it. Okay. What are the names? You've got great eyesight. He's a hmm. cyborg. Let's see. Peter, Andrew, Boanerges, Thomas, John. Do you sound familiar to anybody? Um. Philip, Matthew, Bartholomew, James, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas. Any guesses before I give and it away? The last one? It appears to say Marian Kind. That one Marian you probably don't kind. know. I think I've heard that somewhere. That's German. It means the child of Mary. It sure does. This is where we store all the really dangerous items. The other 12 are Stuff the like apostles. this. No, no overt religious symbolism, I swear. But what do you want me to say? Zars! They're the twelve disciples. Actually, they're all emulators. And the son and they've all been Mary sealed, Charles including Mary. the one we just retrieved. Why are these Zohars here? Why do you? How do you have so well, many? Well, a corporation does dabble a little in everything. Besides, these days you can't get by without having something to deal with the gnosis. These and deal we with the gnosis. Definitely Enosis? can't wait around for the Federation to get off its lazy butt. What's in the room across from here? Nothing pleasant, I'll tell you that much. You're not going to show us? Trust me, it ain't something you'd want to see. Even if we were to consider the diversity of your businesses, you're still a foundation, right? I mean, the weaponry on this ship far outclassed those on any warship. Who are you people, anyway? We were more or less a government organization previously. Well, I guess if you want to see it that badly... What are we going to see? What could be... Oh, wow. Those would be Gnosis in tubes. I don't remember all their names. What the hell is that? 
What is this? Is it Genova? <gasps> I warned you. You weren't gonna like it, didn't I? All of these specimens appear to be humans whose bodies turned into Gnosis. Transform bodies. I've only heard of them before. This Most part? people just turn white and shatter to pieces. Right. But there are a few exceptions, and they end up like this. We've named this one Betty for now. Ah, you named it. Wonderful. It's hard to look straight at them. But I don't want to refer to them by some code name or number. It's just not right to treat the dead like mere objects. I would. Is that a lady? Yep. She was a little girl. The last time we saw her. She got big. People turning into Gnosis? Is that what happened to Cherenkov? Have you learned anything about them? Not much. Plenty of Gnosis remains have been recovered to date. But nobody's learned a thing from them. You know what they're composed of? What? No. Sodium chloride. Plain old salt. And ACL. Even their translucent bodies are mostly made up of water and sodium hydroxide. How wow. can ordinary compounds like that form creatures like them? How are they no salt? No one really knows why those who survive Gnosis encounters always turn into one of them. Some people think they're a new type of virus. Others say they're beings from another dimension who take on temporary forms in this one. Everyone? Always? No exceptions? Nope. Not as far as I know. You'll, you'll break that streak, Shion, I swear. So they could be from another dimension? Wouldn't that mean that their true forms might exist somewhere else? Who knows? All that's certain is that they're hostile to humans. Not that such a sentiment is unique to them. Chief, is something wrong? You don't look so good. She thinks she's gonna <gasps> die. No, don't worry. It's nothing. Oh yeah, nothing, of course. So, so when did this all begin? Unofficially, phenomena like this have been occurring periodically over the past few centuries. Centuries? But, after a certain incident, the Gnosis leapt into the forefront of history. Motion conflict? A certain incident? The Milshin Conflict. It's always the Milshin Conflict! Joachim Mizrahi. It was he who opened Pandora's box and unleashed the Gnosis upon the galaxy. And we're all paying for his ambition. Joachim Mizrahi. The brilliant scientist who founded the UTIC organization. Brilliant? He was a lunatic. Unable to bear his curiosity, he invited the Gnosis into our world. The foundation was established after the war by the newly formed Second Milshin government to clean up and investigate the facts behind the incident. Technically, that's our real job. Problem is, the funding's tight in peacetime. On top of that, running the foundation takes a staggering amount of money, and the management of these Zohars ain't cheap either. That requires so, a lot of power. we ended up privatizing part of our operations and became a foundation. Was we never just too imagined sad. that some of our side businesses would hit it so big, though. wasn't like that. No, of course not. Daddy was a saint and a god, and everything he did was perfect. Uh, Pandora's box I, obviously is a metaphor, but I also think it's literal. <laughs> to be honest with you, I think there is something called Pandora's box in this game. I could be wrong, though. could be thinking of something else. But, uh, yeah, obviously Pandora... Well, I'm sure that's going to be in the database later. I, I, honestly, I want to look at the da database right now, but we'll skip that for, for now. Let's just talk to everybody. Uh, who are you again? We should probably talk to you. Or we could just head up here. Shelly called for me, so I'm heading over to Durandal's Bridge. And away he goes. Because I don't need to care about him, apparently. I wonder where Momo went. First, let's talk to everybody else. Wonder if what I said bothered her. Yes! Perhaps the truth that exists here may have been a bit too much for her. You didn't have to be a dick about it. But one of us, could, Ziggy probably could have said, <clears throat> that's, that's her dad. <laughs> but no, no. 
I'm a little worried about Momo. I wonder where she went. Yonki Mizrahi is a very mysterious man. Now, I think here we need to head west. And we get an email. It is peacetime after all. Therefore, emails. That is just the way of the world. And we get the cathedral ship added to the environmental simulator. Very nice. I will not go there unless I have to. Do not like that place. Now, I want to actually head out this way. I don't think there's anything to be seen in the, uh, the room with all the half-human, half-gnosis in it. So we'll just keep on going. Now here I have to be careful. I need, in order to get this email, right? Because now I need to focus on emails, which is sometimes harder than focusing on the battles. You have to walk right in between these guys. Otherwise you will never get the email. You have to walk right in between these guys. And this will give us mail number 34. We have gotten our dividend from Vectorcom. Very nice. So we get a code disarm key plugin. Uh, that doesn't, well, okay, yeah, they're, they're stock row, so here, here they give us this. It decodes encrypted emails and restores the original text. That doesn't sound all that useful because we haven't gotten anything yet, but you know, we will eventually. Uh, we will also get a 10% discount on all eggs accessories. If you had invested in ACM, you would have gotten 4,000 G and the 10% off eggs accessories. If you invested in Mercedes, you would have just gotten 8,000 G flat, and that's it. Number 34, very nice. So we are still perfect. I, I had to check. I just had to. I couldn't, I couldn't let that one slide. Okay. Strange warehouse for important secrets. You cannot pass through this area without permission from either Master Guinan or Little Master. I believe Little Master will say it's okay. Yes! She left on the train. This is a spaceship. I, I want this just pointed out to everybody. This is a spaceship. We're on the Durandal with a train. It's a spaceship with a train. This reminds me of a dungeon from Xeno Gears. Just saying. I don't think it's the same one, though. Don't think it's the same one at all. So, I believe we, we actually do go on the train. I'm, I'm paranoid about going to the wrong place. Uh, where we don't want to go is the park. Park is the last place you want to go. So, we're going to start with the dock because we're not in the dock. We're gonna be here a while. The Randall is huge. You thought the Elsa was big? You thought the Woglinde was big? This has a train. <laughs> this is huge. The Durandal is not a small thing. I mean, you think all these people would be a little worried that they almost died to Gnosis. We fought all these Gnosis. They don't seem to care in the slightest. They're just like, where the hell am I? Look at this guy. Haven't seen one in this area. I think someone said he saw a little girl he'd never seen before in the park. A little girl is pretty rare. I, I don't like the way that was phrased. Do I know? The Durandal also acts as the Foundation's administrative government. No, I don't understand what you're saying. You'll see when this ship arrives in port at the Foundation, and he's absolutely right that we will, but I don't want to really describe it because, well, the scene describes it all to itself, and it's a very nice scene, so I'll just let it describe itself. It's a work corridor down there, so we can't go that way. Now, I believe, oh, here, by the way, we have a little, like, I don't even know which, what would you call these people movers? They're not really escalators because they're not they don't turn into stairs. But whoa, you go up this side, you can go down this side, lightning speed, but you can also do it backwards. And I think it's a lot funnier doing it backwards. Where the hell is this guy? The launch to the foundation is currently closed because we're not at the foundation, but 
I always do it the wrong way. It's, uh, do Japanese people drive on the same side as the Americans or the British? I always forget. Probably the Americans, which is why it works that way. And let's talk to you. Uh-oh. That's not right. What? That sounded fine. It's not like he's broken or anything. He seems to be taking lessons from Little Master on how to hit on girls, and he's practicing. God, that's terrible. Reality and trying to pick up girls. Okay, so we can head over here, and this will lead to uh, the Elsa, which I'm actually going to go in. Why? Because there's a save point, and that's pretty much what I'm looking for. So, now we are back on board the Elsa. How big is the Durandal? It has the Elsa in it. And only at one train stop. But that is actually going to do it for these parts of Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 1. I've been Butler Scuba. I've been joined, as always, by my exceedingly point-having squad of Xion and Cosmos, apparently, is still with us. Everybody else is oh. off somewhere else, especially Momo. Hope you guys have enjoyed these parts. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.